We gather today for a profoundly special event in the 169 history, year history of Boston College. It is my privilege as chair of the Board of Trustees to welcome you to the continuation of an extraordinary legacy of leadership, the installation of the 16th president of Austin College. We welcome each of you today, those seated in Wind Chapel and those joining by Facebook and live stream. Family and friends of the old days, welcome to Austin College. We want you to feel at home. I offer greetings and welcome to the many representatives of higher education from around the country. And a special thanks to Dr. Kent Trochte, president of Lycoming College and an exceptional mentor of Stephen O'Day. It is a pleasure to welcome past President Marjorie Haas, President Maris Oscar Page, and Dr. Michael Imhoff, who served as interim president last year. It is a distinct honor to welcome the Austin College community, family, and neighborhood friends for this historic event. Let me extend our warm welcome to each of you. Finally, it's my honor this evening to acknowledge and articulate the executive duties of leadership for Stephen O'Day as the 16th president of Austin College. In this moment of community and celebration, let the inauguration ceremony officially be called to order. Chapter 4, verse 147 of the Holy Quran is translated as, Why should God punish you if you have thanked him and you have believed in him? And God is ever all appreciative, all knowing. Gratitude, therefore, is an obligation, and we should clean our hearts to thank God for everything that he has provided for us and for this memorable day. As we are gathered here today, we thank him for giving us this wonderful opportunity to come together to celebrate the inauguration of Austin College's 16th president, Mr. Stephen O'Day. Our companionship and unity at Austin College is unmatched by any other place. God has brought us together on this wonderful occasion to celebrate our values of friendship and community. I would like to thank everyone for attending this historical event at Austin College. Thank you.
On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Austin College, I am pleased to install Stephen P. O'Day as the 16th President of Austin College. With this installation, we entrust the Chief Executive Leadership for Austin College to President O'Day. The Board charges you, Stephen O'Day, three broad and fundamental responsibilities. To strengthen the stature and role of this National Liberal Arts Institution, to continue the historic and vital relationship with the Presbyterian Church USA and to nurture this relationship among the congregation and institutions around the world. To provide students with an education of excellence, enabling them to construct lives of service and value as alumni who are responsible, contributing participants in all their varied communities. Will you, Stephen O'Day, accept the charges of the board and as president commit yourself fully to the life of Austin College and its mission. I will. In recognition of your acceptance and installation as president and by the authority of the board of trustees, I am pleased to invest you as president of Austin College with the medallion bearing the seal of the college. As is our custom, will the 15th president Please now assist me in this investiture. The medallion bears on its reverse side the names of the previous presidents of the college beginning in 1849. May their heritage and their commitment to this college serve as a strong example and a firm foundation for you, Stephen, as you carry out the responsibilities of this office. Congratulations. And may God bless you in your work. Amen. Will you, who are present, support President O'Day with your prayers, wise counsel, and benevolent concern for him and his family, seeking always the best interest of Austin College? Will you, Stephen O'Day, discharge with zeal and honesty the duties and responsibilities of President of Austin College, remembering always whose people you serve. I will, with God's help. Please join me in the prayer of installation. Generous and extravagant God, God of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar, God of covenant, grace, and community, we come before you today with gratitude for your steadfast care in our individual lives, in the life of Austin College, and in the influence of our alumni throughout the world. We come with joy and excitement as we face new horizons in our life together. Eternal God, you have accompanied, empowered, and inspired all people associated with Austin College since the day of its founding. Our prayer on this particular day, in this particular place, is that, we, that, is that you will continue to use this college as an instrument of your gracious love, enabling students to recognize their profound giftedness 
and to work so that their giftedness is good news to the whole world. Keep us faithful in our efforts to live out our covenant with the Presbyterian Church by focusing on what our church relatedness enables Austin College to offer to all students, to the church, and to the world. God of care and comfort, we pray that you will be with President O'Day. Guide, nourish, and strengthen him. Give him wisdom and courage, energy and imagination, clarity and insight as he leads us into an uncertain and exciting future. Work through him and work through us all to articulate and enact a vision for Austin College that honors and celebrates our heritage by inviting, encouraging, and assisting all students to construct lives of service and value. Help the rest of us be good neighbors and colleagues to President O'Day and his family, partners in our common effort to exhibit and embody the values that have guided Austin College throughout its history, and good stewards of all of the resources you have entrusted to our care. God of grace and glory, we offer this prayer with deep hope and assurance as we remember your promise to lead us beside still waters and in paths of peace, peace and righteousness, to accompany us even through the darkest valley, and to follow us with goodness and mercy every day for the rest of our lives. With all the saints who have come before us in the history of this college, with gratitude and joy, we pray confidently in your strong name. Amen.
Good afternoon. Trustees of Austin College, President Haas, President Page, President Imhoff, representatives of colleges, universities, and educational associations, faculty, students, guests, O'Day family members, and friends. I have been given the great honor of introducing your 16th president on the occasion of his inauguration. We have gathered for this important ceremony at a time when residential liberal arts colleges face challenges due to demographic trends and a technological revolution that is disrupting higher education. It is in such, mom in such moments, it is vital that an institution find a leader who offers a compelling vision, communicates passion for the liberal arts, exhibits great energy, and possesses the capacity to engage and inspire others. I am here today to affirm for the Austin College community what you already know. You have found that leader in your new president, Stephen P. O'Day. In his call for the Austin College community to recommit itself to educating the whole student, mind, body, and spirit, President O'Day has offered you a compelling vision deeply rooted in the history of the liberal arts college in America. Samuel Elliott Morrison, one of the great historians of higher education, has identified it as the central aim of the American liberal arts college. According to Morrison, it is only through studying and disputing, eating and drinking, playing and praying as members of the same college community in close and constant association with each other and with their tutors that the priceless gift of character is imparted. Your new president and I have been colleagues for two decades. He is the right person to lead Austin College in its continuing quest to educate the whole student and to vitalize its appeal to prospective students. We met when he was coach of the women's soccer team team at Franklin and Marshall College. And through the years, our friendship included many sporting events together, including road trips where we would drive as much as eight hours to watch the college's team compete. He knows deeply the life lessons that are learned through athletics and other forms of play. And he will ensure that learning through playing together will be integral to Rue Nation. Even while he was still coach O'Day, Stephen expanded his personal engagement in higher education. In 1998, I made the wise decision to hire him as an associate dean for academic advising and pre-law advisor. Shortly thereafter, he started teaching courses regularly for the Department of Business, Organizations, and Society. His classroom was a lively place where Stephen engaged students through the Socratic method commonly used in law schools. He also knows and embraces the life of the mind. From 2002 to 2013, as senior associate dean of the college, your new president worked with others at Franklin and Marshall to create a community where students are, as the Morrison quote suggests, in close and constant association with each other and with their faculty. We called this community a college health system and it became the linchpin to our efforts to educate the whole student. President O'Day was a primary architect of this system. He understands in profound ways the nature of authentic learning communities, how they come into being, and how they deepen student engagement. He will bring this knowledge and his collaborative style to your future together. Finally, during their early months in office, I'm sure you have seen the joy, the genuine warmth, and compassion that Stephen and Cease will bring to your lives. You will enjoy celebrating with them, and they will be there for those who need comfort. They are quite simply good people who will enhance your community. And it is now my absolute pleasure to invite your 16th president to deliver his inaugural address.
Thank you, Kent. Could we have imagined 20 years ago at 625 College Avenue that we would be here today? <laughs> Members of the Board of Trustees, Chair David Corrigan, Presidents Haas, Imhoff, and Page, faculty, staff, students, community members, family and friends, many of whom have traveled a long way to be here, I thank you. I want to also extend a heartfelt thank you to Rebecca Gafford and all of the members of the inauguration committee who organized every last detail to make this ceremony a true celebration of one of the finest colleges in the country. Particular thanks to Anna Laura Page and Carmen Tafoya for their special contributions, and to all who are participating in today's ceremony and all the week's events. Thank you to my esteemed colleagues present today representing your colleges and universities. And thank you to absent friends and all those who are with us today to recognize this special moment in Austin College's long history. I'm about to talk about how the world has changed, and as I reflected on that question, I couldn't help but first look at how my life has changed. As you heard, I started as a prof uh, my professional career as an attorney and became a soccer coach and then made a life-changing transition to higher education. Dr. Bill Marshall hired me to coach the women's soccer program at Franklin and Marshall College. Th that was my launch into higher education. Ken Trochte was next when he hired me as the pre-law advisor, and since then he has been a treasured mentor and friend. He was also a prophet one evening when we were returning from a meeting in New York City many years ago, he described in great detail the promotion that he was offering me. And when I eagerly accepted, Kent paused, turned, and said, Stephen, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> of course, he was right. But what I did know was that Kent would keep me on track, give me opportunities to grow, be a great friend, and in the years that would follow, prepare me for a college presidency. I have been blessed to be surrounded by others, too, who have helped me along the way. Louis Thane, president of Lebanon Valley College. John Fry former president of Franklin and Marshall and now president of Drexel University, are others who have had a profound impact on my life and career. Also, all of those incredible colleagues and friends with whom I have worked and with whom I have learned, I thank you, you trained me well. I've also been surrounded by a family that has supported and encouraged me to grow. My brother Mike, my sister Eileen, the rest of my family back east, and of course my parents. Both have passed away, my dad just last summer, but I have no doubt they are watching, proud of what they began, proud of their son, and pulling some strings here and there just to let me know they're paying attention. And I was quite sure of that when the inauguration committee suggested today, March 23rd, as my inauguration date. Today is dad's birthday. Of course it is. <laughs> Other family has encouraged and pushed me to grow, and that is the family that I married into. Cece's parents, Forrest and Kitty, and I know they wanted to be here, and I know they're watching right now from a snowdrift in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Cece's sister, Sarah, our niece, Catherine, are here today. They have all helped me to be ready for this moment. 
And then there's Cease and Ryan. You have made this possible. You are my inspiration. I love you both more than words can describe. What's next? I propose that we are all here in this place today because of the people of Austin College who have always asked the question, what's next? In the early 19th century, the country was changing quickly. We were a young and pioneering nation. No one knew exactly what would come next, but some knew that education held the key. And so with great effort, planning, a gift from Emily Austin, in 1849, a group of determined Presbyterians were granted the charter for Austin College. From the college's start, its mission was to provide an education grounded in the liberal arts and sciences. The college's charter was modeled after the charters of Princeton and Harvard for the, quote, education of youth in the learned languages and in the liberal arts and sciences. Also from its early years, Austin College has been committed to educating the whole student following the classical tradition of mens sana in corpora sano, a sound mind in a sound body. Daniel Baker, the preacher who was a driving force in the establishment of Austin College, became its second president and spent much of his life as its champion. Our own Light Cummins, noted in his Austin College of Sesquicentennial History, Baker spoke often of the importance of physical activity with academic studies. He said, for exercise to be profitable, the mind must be recreated as well as the body. And he claimed that often, along with ball playing and gymnastic exercise are the very thing. <laughs> of course, these Presbyterian pioneers were not going to ignore the spiritual development of their students either. Service was emphasized and students were expected to live virtuous lives. In the years since its founding, Austin College continued to ask, what's next? Academic programs evolved, literary societies flourished. In 1892, a baseball team formed. Football followed in 1896 and then basketball in 1910. In 1905, a glee club was formed and half the student body auditioned. <laughs> an orchestra formed as well. And in 1942, an a cappella chorus began. The college has never lost focus of its mission to educate the whole student. In 1918, the college again asked, what's next? and became a co-educational institution. It wasn't just men who sought an education of mind, body, and spirit. And so new literary societies were added. A service club and a women's basketball team were formed almost immediately. Since then, the college has had its share of challenges, but all the while, it has stayed true to its values. It has been unwavering in its belief in the importance of personally, individually, educating the whole student. Our work is to transform students so they can transform the world. Can there be a, high, a higher calling than this? This is why we dedicate ourselves, day in and day out, to our work as educators, mentors, students, administrators and staff, board members, alumni, and friends. We are an entire Rue Nation committed to the ideal that Winston Churchill so simply proclaimed, what is the use of living if it not be to strive for noble causes and make this muddled world a better place for those who will live in it after we have gone? And now we gather today, 169 years after this cause began. Unlike the first half of the 19th century, 
We now face a time of unprecedented scrutiny of higher education, a liberal arts education in particular. The value of what we do and how we do it has been questioned by some. There are those who say the era of the liberal arts is over. I argue the opposite. Never in history has higher education been more valuable. Never has an education in the liberal arts and sciences been more important. Why? Because we cannot know with certainty what's next. The world is changing. The world of work is changing rapidly. The United States Department of Labor projects that unlike even 25 years ago, people will now experience on average 10 to 14 jobs by age 38. We also know that the majority of those jobs that will exist 5, 10, 20 years from now do not yet exist. In a future where careers will be measured not by a single job, but rather multiple jobs over a lifetime, employers are looking for people who can cope with this uncertainty and fluidity. They need, need people who can adapt, can make connections, and have a wider way of engaging with the world. They want critical thinkers, collaborators, clear communicators, and creative problem solvers. These are the very values embedded in a liberal arts education, an Austin College education. In his book, You Can Do Anything, The Surprising Power of a Useless Liberal Arts Education, Pulitzer Prize winner and New York Times best-selling author George Anders writes, quote, in a tech-dominated world, the most needed degrees are the most surprising, those in the liberal arts. Curiosity, creativity, and empathy aren't unruly traits that need to be reined in to ensure success, just the opposite. The human touch has never been more essential in the workplace than it is today. The job market is quietly creating thousands of openings a week for people who can bring a humanist's grace to our rapidly evolving high-tech future. When introducing the iPad 2, Steve Jobs summarized his strategy this way, quote, it is in Apple's DNA that technology alone is not enough. It's technology married with liberal arts, married with the humanities, that yields us the results that make our hearts sing. These skills, critical thinking, an analytical mindset, empathy, a breadth of perspective, and the ability to communicate your ideas are instilled here at Austin College through personal mentoring and through teaching and learning across and beyond the campus. This is in our DNA too and is echoed in names like Hall, Mason, Pierce, and Street. As we ask what's next, we know that these skills and educational values have their place here but we must also ensure that they have a space here. In his biography of Leonardo da Vinci, Walter Isaacson writes, quote, ideas are often generated in physical gathering places where people with diverse interests encounter one another serendipitously. That is why Steve Jobs liked his buildings to have a central atrium and why the young Benjamin Franklin founded a club where the most interesting people of Philadelphia would gather every Friday. At the court of Ludovico Sforza, Leonardo found friends who could spark new ideas by bringing together their diverse passions. Austin College is such a place. Here, a basketball player there is also a jazz musician who goes on to law school. With guidance from faculty, students at the Idea Center 
study the efficacy of cancer gene therapy. During a Jan term trip to Scotland, a student discovers her calling to the ministry. Through the Johnson Center, faculty members share their research and strengthen their pedagogy. A student through an internship discovers his passion for working with nonprofit organizations. Students learn from mentor professors, coaches, conductors and directors, advisors and coordinators, and they learn from each other, not only through their seminars and simulations, but through discussion in the residence halls and lessons learned through practice on the stage, the mock trial courtroom, and on the playing field. What we do inspires. It inspires not only those who work and live here, but it also inspires those who seek to support our mission. Those like Linda Morris Elsie, her son Todd Lyles, and the Morris Family Foundation, who just a few weeks ago pledged a $7 million leadership gift to transform the former Moody Science Building into the Jack B. Morris Center where the study of business, economics, and entrepreneurship will find a home, and the most interesting people will come together to spark new ideas in one another. It will be a place of which Leonardo and Ben Franklin would be proud. Other transformational gifts have begun to emerge. $1.5 million from Bob and Joyce Johnson to support faith and engagement our students and our faculty. $4 million from Nancy Bryant and Jerry Taylor to support students and faculty to study science and technology. And I believe still others will be inspired and consider exciting ways in which they, in their own way, will join in Austin College's bright future. What's next? What will be the next thing that challenges us to go further than we thought possible? How will the students sitting with us today change tomorrow? Austin College, this is our time. And here we are to carry on and to build anew, to remember our past and look to our future to soak in knowledge and spark new ideas, to ask the question, what's next? What's next? In some ways we do know. We will continue our unwavering commitment to the personal education of the whole student and the value of the liberal arts and sciences in forming creative, analytical thinkers and collaborators. Our students will be prepared for a future of wonder, challenge, and opportunity. They will lead and serve, create and solve, collaborate and communicate. This will not change. What's next? In some ways, we don't know. Who could have imagined that 12 seconds on the beach at Kitty Hawk would someday give rise to great ships named Gemini, Apollo, Enterprise, and Endeavor. Who would have imagined 50 years ago that rotary dial telephones and cathode ray tubes would give way to cell phones and Bluetooth in an age of the internet and computers that fit in your hand? What's next? Our world is different now than yesterday, and it will change again tomorrow. We can't know exactly what's next. We just know we will be ready. God bless all of us here today. God bless Austin College, and may God bless our work together in the years to come. Thank you.
beyond the threshold dedicated to President Stephen O'Day, who in his commentary on Austin College stated that we must know that a real education always goes beyond the threshold of a classroom. This has always been a special place where the universe stretches its arms and yawns, growing just beyond the dawn, where the mind transforms and awakes to brilliant goals and teals and all the colors of ideas and all the intensities of ideals. The stars snack on the air here, crunching into bites of blackness on cool evenings where philosophy and possibility sing from the trees like crickets, where mathematical theories argue casually over a cool Dr. Pepper and then swap jokes and share memories. The sun hangs out here late afternoon when it's not too busy spinning firestorms to hear the latest, share the laughter, wait for new theories to dance in over the North Lawn and wonder who will come. And will they too see the colors of ideas, the global impact of service, the stretching growth of young arms robed in integrity. A father looks down from cosmic heights of grand perspective on the day of his birth, a day of his son's passage. He sees the path, his own lessons shared, transformed, echoed, movement to the front point of an undulating V, winging high, wild birds fly beyond their borders, all in growth, all transforming, seeing, uplifted by winds of courage in the excitement of the morning air. This has always been a special place, nest of hope, sparkling with new growth and massive skies of opportunity, spreading bloom-like rays into a field of nations, a garden of languages. A new leader at the point of the V knows that ideas burst beyond the covers of a book, that education goes beyond the threshold of a classroom, that in this Pueblo of a planet, conciencia de comunidad, word and thought transform to action, grow like seed in eager soil. The wild birds know, together and in one common breath of effort, that new worlds lie beyond the threshold, beyond the threshold. The father smiles. He sees his son at the point of the V. On behalf of the student body of Austin College, we welcome and congratulate you, President O'Day, and your wife, Cece. From your very first week on campus, you joined 350 students in service to the community as volunteers. You have supported us in our academic pursuits, athletic competitions, concerts, art and theater performances. You have even challenged some of us to a couple of rounds of scattergories. We are grateful for your commitment, your guidance, and for opening your home and hospitality to students. We look forward to your direction and leadership in the days to come. Thank you.
Austin's college students, faculty, staff, honored guests, members of the Board of Trustees, and of course, President O'Day. As an elected member of the Faculty Executive Committee, it is my pleasure and honor to welcome you to Austin College, and in particular, our community of scholars. The faculty looks forward to working with you as you lead the college as our 16th president in this new, challenging landscape of higher education. We as a faculty promise this day to help all we can, passionately educate our students, and share in the governance of the college where appropriate. We welcome you in confidence that together we will strengthen our community of scholars at Austin College and continue to change the lives of an untold number of students for decades to come. On behalf of the Austin College Staff Council, I congratulate you, President O'Day and CC, on this very special day. I'm very pleased to be part of it. President O'Day, you immediately jumped into the work with both feet and have looked into the workings of all areas of campus so that we know that every job is an important one. We have been inspired and encouraged by your interaction with us individually and as a group to challenge ourselves to try new things and perhaps new ways of thinking about our work. We appreciate the openness and approachability that you and CC have shown from day one, and we look forward to seeing your presidency develop and solidify in the years to come. Thank you. On behalf of the Austin College Alumni Board, many who are here today, we congratulate you, President O'Day, and your engaging wife, Cece, and extended family who are here, and we welcome you to joining the Austin College family. It was such a special honor to have your participation at homecoming this past fall. And as I talked to parents and alumni, I was just amazed by how many sightings of President O'Day there were reporting. <laughs> they shared that they spoke with you at the pub walking about campus, at homing, homecoming festivities, and many other locations were also mentioned. And I was amazed that you were all those places at one time. <laughs> <laughs> but today, we're de delighted that you're in this place, and we have a, that you've officially joined the Rue Nation, and that you're accepting the mantle of Rue responsibility with such grace and dignity. On behalf of all alumni everywhere, all Austin College alumni welcome you, and we say thank you, and of course offer our heartfelt congratulations. Congratulations. President O'Day, it is a great honor for me to represent the Board of Trustees in welcoming you and the amazing C.C. O'Day to Austin College. You have, in these early months, demonstrated really all of the qualities that the Presidential Search Committee uh, was so interested, in, so interested in. And I am so honored uh, to be a part of this welcome ceremony. I'm also honored to represent generations of Austin College students and graduates whose worldview has been shaped and whose lives have been changed by this amazing institution. In the years since I first set foot on this campus, I have had the honor to know four of Austin College presidents, from John D. Mosley, who encouraged me to pursue a life of public service, to Mar Dr. Marjorie Haas, under whose leadership Austin College has grown in inclusiveness, academic excellence, and quality. And now we look to you, President O'Day, to build on the incredible legacy of your predecessors and to lead this college that we all love so much in the challenging and exciting days ahead. Welcome. What a great day. On behalf of Grace Presbytery and its 145 congregations and the larger Presbyterian Church USA, we welcome you. 
Presbyterians know Austin College, whether they are alumni, donors, students, or honorary members of the Rue Nation. They respect the long-standing quality of education. Students coming to Austin College leave with life formation, not just an academic degree. The college offers the gift of a liberal arts education and equips students to be citizens of the world in a society which needs the breadth of knowledge, the inquisitive learning, and the ethical values which are honed and shaped in this environment by fellow students, faculty, and administrators, the board of trustees, and the thousands of people who see themselves as part of the AC family. It is a privilege to be present today, President O'Day, and to continue your welcome and invitation into a family which keeps on giving, literally and figuratively, to the quality of education which is Austin College. Your life, like all those who have been and are part of the AC experience, will be shaped by the gift of yourself and the transformation which occurs for you and others as part of this remarkable community called Austin College. We welcome you today with enthusiasm, gratitude, and hope. Thank you. On behalf of the Sherman Independent School District Board of Trustees and the Texoma region, we are honored to have you, President O'Day. When UNCC got to experience firsthand the oldest football rivalry in the state of Texas, <laughs> I knew you were hooked on this community. The city of Sherman and the surrounding communities have heard your call to be connected to one another. It is absolutely necessary in order for everyone to succeed. We look forward to the growing partnerships between local school districts, higher education, and local industries as we strive to make Texoma the premier place for quality education, quality jobs, and most importantly, the best place to call home. Welcome, neighbor. Today we 
Wow. <laughs> and now as we begin this new era at Austin College, let us go out and go forward together as people of peace. Let us cling tightly to all that is good and return no one evil for evil. Let's support the weak, strengthen the faint-hearted, honor all people, love and serve the world. Let us share what we have, speak truth tenderly and lovingly, and clean up our own messes. Let's use the brains God gave us and act like gifted and beloved people because that really is what we really are. And let's do all that we do with the full confidence that the grace, mercy, and peace of Almighty God are with us, all of us, today, tomorrow, and forever. Seriously. Amen.